ever wondered how people become entrepreneurs? How they make money without having a 9 to 5? What about the people that have made their money, acquired millions? How do they continue to have their money work for them? Knowledge is power, my people. Unfortunately, most people aren't too fond of sharing such information without a cost. So here it is for free. All I ask in return is that you pay it forward, share this info with others. This is Marla Nicole, and you're listening to Business Bullish, where we cover business and money matters from start to finish. You can find me on Instagram at Miss Marla Nicole with an MS, MS Marla Nicole, or at www.marlanicole.com. Thanks for listening. Nick, thank you. You're so funny. <laughs> Anyway, welcome to Business Bullish. Nikki, I'm so happy to have you on. Um known you for 20 years. We just spoke about the ums too, and I did it. That's a thought. Remember that, people. Um is when you're thinking. Anyhow, known you for 20 years. Yep. And basically titled this podcast From Corporate to Cannabis. Yep. That is it's a big deal. It's a big deal for someone like me who comes from the political and law enforcement background and then you know the corporate background so tell us about the corporate background okay so that's when we actually met 22 years ago if i'm correct uh we worked for the phone company i won't tell you who it is but we that's where i got my game part of it and so i started off as a sales representative for the phone company and I remember sitting on the floor bank, on the bank of floor of telephones and representatives. And I remember thinking, you know, why, why is everyone so happy to be here? When in my thoughts, I was thinking, how can I move into management? And, and at the time I was 22 years old, I'm 46 now. And I was always thinking about growing or moving up leadership. It's innate. It's something I always wanted to do. Right. So I worked for the company. I moved up into management a few years later. Um, and so there's where I got my skills as in management, working with uh, subordinates and also working with other leadership. Uh, Marlo and I met prior to her going into law enforcement. So we became really good friends then. We club. We used to go out. We were in our 20s. <laughs> I was actually like, in my teens you when might have been younger started. yeah but you were always a leader though and True. that was the that I tried. Was, and i remember i have a story oh, i remember God. people saying or, or i remember people asking me the question do you know marlo and i'm like who is this marlo chick and i would see her on the elevator and didn't know this was the marlo chick and then what well, people would always ask me and then finally we met and we exchanged names and I don't remember specifics, but I remember we became really good friends uh, yes. quite early. So, yeah, that's, um, it's crazy. It's always nice when you have people that you've known a long time and you guys have always remained cool and friendly and cordial and just like tight, you're like family. Yep. And you've always been like family. And so outside of the corporate world, I know that you got into entertainment. Mm -hmm. So, Team Ramsey, what is that all about? Okay, so I started off as a church volunteer working for the uh, media department back in the late 90s. And I was really just a volunteer and I was a single mother. And I would um, bring my son to church every Sunday at 6 a.m. And I would do the technical setup. Technical is just basically lighting and cameras. I had no idea what the heck I was doing. But after so many years of doing it, uh, I became even more interested in it. So, you know, TV, cameras, it was, I'm a techie person. So I like tech stuff, you know. So then I started doing that. And I did that for probably about 15 years as a volunteer. But I started getting paid when the other people weren't getting paid, the other volunteers. And the reason being is I was willing to be there early and leave late and do a little bit more than everybody else. And I was a lot younger and physically fit back then. So... There's a lot of things that I can do that I probably can't do now because I hire people to do it. But um, that's how I got started at the church. You you can't see her right now um, fully, but she's about the size of my 10-year-old daughter. So, because yeah, I just looked at her. <laughs> so, 
So when you talk about being in shape and physically fit. Or more like a 12-year-old boy, not a 10-year-old girl. <laughs> I'm the size of a 12-year-old boy. Shaped like a woman, excuse me. Oh, I'm glad you corrected that one because I was going to leave that one alone. But you always this, The up. height of a 12-year-old boy, the size of a petite woman. Thank you. All women. Excuse me. All women. <laughs> How in the world did you end up in the cannabis industry coming from corporate, coming from uh, producing... Where did this cannabis uh, life come from? So I smoke marijuana. That's my pastime. It's something I enjoy doing. It's something that I do with my adult son. Um, so what happened was um, my, my son pretty much, honestly, while, while I was working at the phone company, uh, I spent a lot of time building and what I call my empire and uh, growing. And so I spent a lot of time away from the home. So my son, at the time, pretty much raised himself. Um, he was home by himself quite a bit as I tried to uh, put money on, you know, put money on the table, feed us. So what happened is, uh, you know, when you have a kid and the mom's away from home, latchkey kid, dad is away from home, he pretty much raised himself. And so he got into some trouble um, and the bond was, the family bond was broken. Well, Later on, uh, we decided through some therapy and also a parole officer that uh, the use of recreational cannabis uh, wasn't necessarily a bad thing. So it was very therapeutic for us. We would spend a couple hours a day just really talking about you know, how we feel and where we are and what went wrong. And we started rebuilding. And then I met someone in the industry um, who actually uh, is a distributor. And we began talking and then I saw what she brought to the table and it was very interesting and I saw ways of making money. So now I'm not just a tech person, but I'm also a leader and I also like money. I like money a lot. And I think you all can relate to that. Right. And so I um, decided that I wanted to learn every aspect of what she does. And she took me under her wing and she showed me everything through consultation and I applied it, but I didn't just stop there. I actually... Um, you know, went out and I learned how to do it. And I took a step by step and, and then she was extremely proud of me. Thank you very much. And so that's how I got started. I learned, I got under someone. You know, I heard P. Diddy say years ago that if you want to do something, you go and you put yourself in the arena of people who are already doing it. Yep. So I figured since I partake that I might as well just find a way to marry the two worlds, the money aspect of it and the recreational use of it. So it, gives, it gave me an edge up that when I went into the different dispensaries to talk to the different buyers and um, managers about uh, you know, selling it to them, uh, it was easy, easier, I'm not gonna say easy because it's, it's extremely difficult, but it was easier for me to use buzzwords and how to sell it to the different dispensaries. So I had one leg up, I believe, than a lot of people out there. Um, especially sometimes what happens when you're, I'll speak for me, being an African-American woman, going into a business like that, you don't see a lot of us. So walking into these dispensaries and walking in and talking to these buyers and, and management team, you know, they kind of look at you like, mm -hmm, yeah. And I had one, I actually had one buyer say to me, yeah, so what are you guys, what are you selling? And I'm like, oh, wow. really? Like, really? Wow. What am I selling? Like, wow. we spoke on the phone prior to me showing up and you're asking me what I'm selling. But... You know, you got to, you know, smile and grin and bear it. And you put on your happy smile that I learned working with the phone company as a service representative. Uh, and let me back up a little bit. I was actually in management. I don't know if I said that at the phone company. Yeah. So because it's a pretty big company, they send us through leadership training. Absolutely. So while in leadership training and in being in leadership for over 10 years, I learned how to deal with other people. Conflict resolution. Conflict, that's definitely part of it, conflict yes. resolution. And how to deal with subordinates and how to deal with peers and how to deal with other companies and whatnot. Um, it's a learned skill. And I didn't know at the time that I was actually gaining that information to move into my own business of selling cannabis. But um, that's exactly what it was. It was preparing me for this world and running my own business. So some things that are barriers and hardships to others is not necessarily one for me. Uh, and I'll give you an example. If someone, if I walk into a dispensary 
and I'm speaking with a buyer in a meeting, one or two, it's usually two or three of them sitting there. Wow, okay. Uh, they have a lot of questions. And, you know, you learn how to weave through the questions and answering them uh, in a way, even if you don't know the answer, you, right. you, you find a way to answer their questions. Uh, and then sometimes you have to get back to them, you know what I mean, and answer the question. But learning how to sell is very important in this business very important in this business because it's, and it's a lot of money, but um, there are a lot of people out there doing what we do. There's just not a lot of African-Americans doing what we do. Right. Uh, African-American women, to be exact. Man, that's like so, a double negative. It's a double negative when you walk through the yeah. door. So you almost have to move up twice, you know, get over the negativity, you know, with a smile. And it's really hard right now, Marlo, because we wear a mask, so they can't read your face. They right. don't know who you are. Right. So it's overcoming that obstacle as well. Absolutely. But we, our company, Love Bud, has been successful in doing so. Uh, we're in a couple stores, as you may know. So you're, you're answering all the questions I was going to okay. ask you. So right. let me just try to um, like dig a little deeper sure. into that. So you're currently in stores. Mm -hmm. The process that you had to go through... Um, what was that like? I mean, like from the time that you got this opportunity and you said, oh, wow, I'm actually about to be in the cannabis world. Um, what did that do to you mentally? Like, what was your thought process and how you were going to, to kind of build this brand? It still hasn't hit me. <laughs> no, it has. Um, I mean, I got to keep going back to the fact that I had so much consultation from my friend and she, and she really walked me through the process step. I can call her at 10, 11 o'clock at night. One I'm sure I can call her at one o'clock in the morning if I wanted to. And she helped me answer all my, she answered all my questions. I test everything she said and she was 100% right. Um, so for me, and I'm not a fearful person. I, I really am a leader by uh, innately. Um, so I'm not afraid of the no. So I almost expect for someone to say no. Just basically, how'd you feel? How did I feel? How did you feel going through the process? What was the process like for you? Um, saying, I have this brand and I need to get it into stores. I beat my, con I beat people to it. The buyers think that they're in there for themselves, but I'm really, over I'm really leading and guiding the conversations. So I have a lot of experience in sales though. So it's really... I'm coming from a point of view of confidence. You gotta have the confidence when you walk yes. in, even if you don't feel it. Even when I, because my first meeting, I actually sold on my first meeting, but I, 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 ha I showed confidence in a way that, um, which is a learned skill, and it's learned through, you know, being in situations. I'm also um, I own property and I have tenants, so I've and I, I've had support. Um, employees that I've had to work with. So you you build this sort of, uh, this this skill building that you have and you're taught how to show confidence when you don't have confidence. Um, so even though I didn't know the industry per se, I'm not afraid of the no, is the best way for me to explain it. I'm just not afraid so, of people. So would you say that the cannabis industry is basically like selling any other product or is there a unique, um, take that you have when you go into these dispensaries rather than if you were trying to sell, I don't know, lotion or candy? No, I think it's the same um, when you're talking about small end products like that. I mean, I wouldn't compare it to like owning a restaurant or something or selling food in a restaurant, but I would, if you want to compare it to um, tangible, smaller items, yeah, it's the same thing. There's a pretty much a model that I follow. Okay. You know, I, I talk about what we what we do, what we are selling, and then price points, and then you know you just kind of talk, and you answer questions. Can you? The real test is can you answer the questions? Right, uh, is what it comes down to. But if you can cover those things in your presentation, um, it's it's a little bit easier. And then you start getting the same questions over and over from the buyers of what they want and how they want to uh, what they're looking for. Okay. So you start gaining knowledge of what's out there. Now, one of the mistakes, I'll tell you, one of the mistakes I made, because they're all mistakes, they're, you do fall. Learning curves. Learning curves, right? Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, is that I didn't, I went in and I, again, I didn't know anything other than use the use of recreational uh, cannabis. Right. Um, one of the mistakes that I made right away was I started talking about me. <laughs> 
And I started talking about what I have and who I am. And they're really not interested in that. You really have to focus on the product itself. Right. And, and listen to what their needs are because they, they sell the product to their uh, customers. Right. Absolutely. And I thought because I am a customer that um, I can approach it from my own personal point of view, which you do sprinkle in a little bit of your own personal experience, but that's maybe 5% of a sale, maybe 6 or 7% if you really want to go there. Right, right. So what is it exactly, um, in your opinion, that the buyers are looking for from you? Because um, my understanding is, number one, getting a brand is difficult. There's a lot of people that have jumped into the cannabis industry. And of course I had to do my research because I needed to make sure I, I capture all of this, but there's a lot of people that think that they can just get into the cannabis industry and they're going to immediately, like I'm, I'm a millionaire. I made all this money now. And I know that just from a business perspective, it's kind of naive to think that way. And I know that you haven't thought that way because it's an investment, it's a commitment, um, your time, your money, your energy, and I, I cannot forget the fact that you actually, you have your son working with you. Yeah, we're a mother and son duo. Um, and again, remember it started with us, uh, the, with the use of you know therapeutic bonding through Absolutely. recreational. So yeah, it's, it's I'm not gonna say it's, difficult it's as difficult as you, as you make it but what is most important is that you spend a few hours a day learning or putting into your business uh i've heard that before i don't know where i've heard it before i know i'm not making it up right uh but you have to be willing to spend money before you make money and you ha and this is as simple as it gets uh, and you can talk to any business owner you're absolutely. going to spend money to make money period absolutely, absolutely. And then two, you have to spend time with your business every single day. I only take the weekends off because I'm running a production company as well with my husband, Eric Ramsey, with Team Ramsey Entertainment. Thank you. Uh, four movies out. Nice. Uh, you can find us somewhere. Uh, <laughs> get it out. Get it out. Amazon Prime. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, you have to be willing to put in a time. And you know what's funny about that, Marlo? Is people approach me all the time through my... It's, uh, social media right. messaging and DMs, you know, help put me on. I want to be on, you know, I want to sell cannabis. And I'm like, yeah, but are you willing to put in the time? Yeah, I'm willing. And I say, okay, but are you willing to put in six to seven hours a day, even if it's just reading an article? Hmm. My friend that helped me get started into the, um, the cannabis uh, business, she sends me articles, like read what's going on right now. Familiarize, and yourself. familiarize yourself with what's going on. Stay on top of it. Even if you don't make a sale today, even if you don't meet with a buyer today, make sure you're doing something every single day. I converted my breakfast breakfast nook into an office. My breakfast breakfast nook is about 300 square feet. And if I had a picture, you if you saw my breakfast nook, it has literally post-it notes and paper and storyboards all around. It's a visual. It's almost like a, a walking uh, vision board. But we meet every single day. And uh, we go over notes, but we're very organized because we have so much going on in our lives. I, I, you know, I can speak for myself being a wife and a mother, uh, being an employer, having property with tenants, running a film production company. Sometimes we have 25 to 50 crew members on the set and I'm producing or ADing uh, now with the, with the cannabis company. There's a lot going on. So how do I keep everything going? I'm, more, I'm very organized. And when I can't do it, I bring in people to help me stay organized. How did it feel when you made that first sale? I mean, you've already mentioned that you made your first sale on your first time going out. That has got to be an incredible feeling. It felt so good. I was very <laughs> proud of you, by the way, when I heard it. I'm like, Thank you, you got to be kidding me. First like, sale. It felt one. so good. Once I started going through my present, my presentations last maybe five minutes. It's really just talking about the things that are important to the buyer. Five minutes I was in there, and when the, when the gentleman said, you know, I'm gonna order X amount of uh, units, because we sell by the units, uh, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> it felt really good. And then to actually see the money, that was yes. another great feeling, and say, you know, look what I got, you know. Absolutely. So yeah, if, I mean, think about it. Money's good. Who doesn't feel good about money? Yeah, it's like, 
So yeah. getting paid on your first day out is uh, yeah. not a bad deal. At right? All. Not a bad deal right? at all. So what stores are you in? Okay, so I'm at, uh, and don't get me wrong, I'm going to have to check with my son on this one. Universal Collect, the right sign? Kawanga. Uh, on Kawanga in Hollywood. Nice. Yeah. West, nice West Hollywood. Location. We're uh, just married delivery, which is coming soon. Also, uh, we just we just booked another store down in um, Vista, Visalia, Vista. I don't know. This is this is my son's part of the business, so he's he's helping me off. He's off off camera, but uh, Vista. There's another sale that just went through there, and we've only been in a business a few months, and we've been able to close some sales. Uh, and there's one more that we're packaging for down in San Diego. Nice. So probably about four. So far, but my Very goal nice. is uh, 20 to 25 to be comfortable. And where can they follow? Uh, it's Love Bud underscore Love Bud. Love Bud Cannabis. That's the brand. I'm giving them the oh, brand okay. now. Okay. And you can find them at what is Under, it? on Instagram. We're underscore Love Bud. Two, 2020. 2020. Right? Oops. Yeah. You yeah. Know that. Hmm. yeah. <laughs> so underscore research. Love Bud 2020. You can follow us. Uh, we also post the stores we're in. And again, I, I'm going to reiterate because this is really important to me. And it's, and it's really why I even got into the business. It's it's therapeutic for my son and I. You don't often hear about parents and, and children who uh, smoke together or ed have edibles together. We smoke. I'm just going to be honest. We smoke. and um, But it's very therapeutic. And I know with the pandemic and everything going on, you know, it's a lot going on. Why not relax and smoke a joint? You know, you don't have to get fucked up. You know, you can just smoke and, and you know, just enjoy the rest of your day, spend your day on your businesses or hanging out with your family and whatnot, uh, which is very important to me, you know. And so I find that a lot of my friends in the area that I live in, they're, my friends with their adult children are actually doing the same thing. You know, I will tell you, um, just in, in doing all the research and watching the news and you almost can't um, avoid the cannabis industry right now it's it's everywhere and everything i've seen it has been like you said it, it hasn't been african-american um generated even though they have these social equity programs it's not really set up for success mm. so your story is one that makes me uh, really proud mm. and i, I know of a couple of people absolutely i know of a couple of people that are also in the business and they actually have um magazines or or other type of media where they want to support things like this mm. and so i just want to say to nice. them this is a, a great opportunity you know for you know you you always want people to support mom and pop you know stores and black owned business and black on that here you have a mother and son mm -hmm. team that that actually started a cannabis brand that literally created their own packaging and successfully got it into several stores and it doesn't appear to be slowing down at all that's impressive yeah yeah that's impressive and the next time um you know i know it's, it's really hard to deal with um you know like really rich people but when you <laughs> when you guys finish building this this cannabis empire i'm gonna have you back Okay. Because I know you're going to have a lot more experiences and a lot more stories to tell. But I'm, I'm really um, proud. Again, I've known you for Ever. a long time. <laughs> and I, I didn't even time. realize. First of all, I don't smoke. Um, right. I have a cocktail. Um, whatever. But she's the cocktail queen. Yes, I am the cocktail queen. She always queen. has been. Yes. Yes, <laughs> I will agree with that. However, um, what I have learned is that through the legalization of cannabis, I never knew that I knew so many people mm. that smoked or ate edibles. I never knew that she mm -hmm. smoked up until recently. Yeah. And, um, you know, you guys got major secrets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those who know, know. <laughs> There's a lot of secret people out there. I mean, I'm, it's on, not that it's a secret. Well, right now, let's keep it real. I, I have encountered, again, since it's been legal now, I know judges, mm -hmm. yep. political figures, doctors, yes. um, 
therapists. I know right. of very prominent people that I've known for a long time that I would have never in a million years imagined. And they are happy to partake, happy to support, you know, the business. And um, a lot of them, again, it's like a big secret, but um, I'm impressed. I like anything that has to deal with business mm -hmm. and opportunity. And I really think my favorite part about this for you is the fact that you don't see it very often. So when I can actually touch someone that I can say, no, we are doing it. Mm -hmm. And here's a success story. I just, I can't wait to do it. Nice. So nice. Look out for love, bud. Uh, ask for it. If you are a secret or a closet yes. smoker, ask for it. Go to these dispensaries and say, hey, do you have this? Yes. And if they don't, she can get it there. That's right. Um, man, thank you, Nikki. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Anything for you, Marlo. <laughs> thank you for watching Business Bullish. I have no idea if this live feed is even feeding live, but if you're watching now, please subscribe. I want to showcase all of my people, my ladies. Um, when I say people, not just black people, but I, being a black woman, I'm particularly proud to always be able to highlight and showcase some of the, the accomplishments that we have had that we don't typically have. And again, this is definitely one of those, um, those times. This is a, a success story of less than 1% mm -hmm. of people, women, black women in this industry and she's sitting here at my table yeah so for sure that's a big deal to me so i hope you guys uh support it i heard that it's really good um there's this thing called a nose and i heard that the nose is really good it's a really good nose <laughs> it smells great it's like a fine wine i'm not gonna lie it did smell good yeah. um but i also like the smell of gasoline when i pump Oh, gas in my car. You say you don't smoke. <laughs> no. I know for a fact she doesn't smoke, and no. that, that's the truth. <laughs> but gasoline, now I see why. Well, um, my point is I like the scent of things, and so yeah. I can imagine if that's what a good okay. nose is, very gasoline. happy. Gasoline. I Love actually bug. like the smell of gasoline, too. <laughs> really? Oh, I hate Come on. It. I hate this. Gas smells good. Oh, anyway, don't um, say it, Marlo. Yes, probably something oh. wrong with us in, in our cranium to even enjoy that scent. Mm -hmm. Anyway, thank you for watching <laughs> Business Bullish. Make sure you subscribe. You can follow us on Instagram at Business Bullish or at Miss Marlo Nicole. And you can find Nikki at Nikki on the Gram. Uh, it's my personal page, but I would prefer if you go to uh, underscore love but 2020. Absolutely. Talk to you guys soon. We are logging off. <laughs>